Hey! I was thinking, redesigns always suck, don't they? I mean, of course, we do have some that end up being more popular than the original, like the guys from Team Fortress, Doomguy or Samus. But to be completely honest, their designs weren't that good to begin with. Hurts me to say that about the original Doomguy, but that shirt hole to show his six pack just makes me feel off. But most of the time, any redesigns end up with a lot of backlash from fans. I mean, of course you would, right? You play a game your whole life, you have your memories from when you were a kid built around that character you love and then boom, whatever this is. I, I get it. But you know, some actual very good games end up being passed as bad simply because of its main character design. I might get crucified here, but DMC Devil May Cry is actually my favorite in the series. Yeah, I get it, not the Dante you want, but the gameplay and the music in this game is unmatched in my opinion. And in this case, we're gonna talk about not one game, but two that I think got the same treatment even though they are good games. Crash of the Titans and Mind Over Mutant. Crash of the Titans starts with a cutscene showing Cortex and Nina shooting an animal, which then becomes Crash, forced to work but soon to rebel against them. They then use the same weapon to turn other animals into monsters, with their mission being to destroy Crash. We then get a cutscene of Crash, Coco and Crunch chilling their island, but are interrupted by Cortex in a cutscene that I still believe to be pretty funny. Is, is this thing on? Yeah? Ha ha! I'm back, babies! Surrender to Cortex! Make a sucker! Hey, genius! I can't actually hear you. I'm really far away and I'm flying like a hovercraft or something. Aku Aku and Coco are captured, Crunch is frozen in place, and goddamn Crash must have the strongest arm I've ever seen in my life. Ah! Uh, I'm just gonna stay here a while. Already, you'll see that this is definitely not what you're used to with classic Crash Bandicoot. Instead of a long linear level, you have open levels that give you a lot of room for exploration. You can hit things in your way to collect mojo, which is used like an experience meter, and every time you fill this meter, you learn a new move. And the first move you learn is called Old School, the spin attack. I remember a lot of people being mad because of this, but honestly, I think it's a good way to teach players how to do that move. It's the first unlockable in the game and you learn it in the first few minutes, so it's not like you can miss it or anything. The first level has rat nations who work for Cartex, and you can usually catch them off guard talking about random things. It's actually pretty funny and you can always find enemies doing this throughout the whole game. It definitely gives you a good impression of the road being alive instead of just having enemies in your way waiting for you. But how can those roads be a threat compared to us roads that are lanky and delightful and oh so nice? Well, allow me to educate you, my uneducated little chum. Bandicoots, a medium-sized marsupial omnivore from the order Paramelomorphia. Obviously, yes, everyone knows that. Yeah. But what most people don't know is that Paramelomorphia creatures are immune to mojo control. And talking about that, the humor in this game was something that I actually really liked. Being from Brazil, I didn't understand a single thing about the story in this game or what they were talking about as a kid. But playing it now, it can actually be pretty funny. It does have some childish jokes from time to time and also some adult ones. <laughs> Thank you, master! <laughs> you can't replace me! My name's on the stationery! Uh, Thank you. Uh, what? What do you mean? <laughs> Thank you again! <laughs> Hotter than the first! <laughs> but Dr. Cortex is our friend! You don't have any friends! He always kicked you in the turkis and other very gentle spots! But I liked it when he did that! <laughs> it was kind of fun. We find Aku Aku in the forest, and we have our first encounter with the mutants in this game. They are the modified animals we saw transform in the first cutscene of the game. They are stronger than your average enemy, and whenever you hit them, they grow a meter on top of their head. When the meter fills up, you can press circle and take control of that enemy. 
This is the main selling point of this game and the thing you do the most. You get different titans that have different attacks and power-ups, so for example, this is Spike. The most basic one. It has its basic attacks which is a combo and its special attack is making spikes appear from the ground around it. But you have a lot of other titans to pick from, like the sludge which can vomit, go underground and hit enemies, or E electric which is a ranged titan that can hit enemies from far away. Every titan is different and I was actually impressed by the amount of them that are in the game. You keep playing and they won't stop showing up until the end of the game. There are 13 in total and it even has variations of the same type of titan. They also work like in classes too, so for example, there are levels that you have to jack a smaller titan so you can beat a bigger one and control it. It's actually pretty cool stuff. The stories that Cortex and Uka Uka are still in Mojo to create an army of titans that will be used to make something called the Dominator to destroy the Wumpa Islands. In the meantime you also meet other characters like Engine and Tiny Tiger, which for some reason got Mike Tyson as a voice actor. Ah! Oh. Crash, I really am cross with you. I'm just trying to do my job and you go and cause all this chaos. I'm sorry, but I'm gonna have to eat your face. <laughs> Uka Uka gets mad that Cortex failed to destroy Crash, so he replaces him with Nina Cortex, which is Neo Cortex's niece. Nina then brainwashes Coco to finish the Dominator, and now you have to go stop them. The diversity on the levels is pretty impressive, considering the game only takes place around the Wumpa Islands. You would expect to only see jungle and grass everywhere, but there is actually some progression happening in this game, where you start on a level of one type and slowly see it change into another giving an actual feeling that you're going through a huge world by walking through it, not just skipping levels. And the visuals. Just wow, it is actually impressive for a PS2 game to look this good at some point. The game did come out on the Xbox 362, but I don't believe the PS2 was left behind. There are some great views from time to time and even some good camera work to show it. Each level also has some minigames hidden inside of it, where you can enter a separate room and do some challenges to get unlockables, which there are lots in this game. Not only concept art, but even skins for you to use. You get different skins by jacking enemies and completing the game, which is pretty cool, and it can also work as a reason for you to play the game again, so you can unlock more. The music for this is also pretty awesome, and every single song perfectly fits the level you're in. But some of the songs are pretty forgettable, and you won't remember they exist after finishing the game. But even still, they fit the level like they were supposed to. In the end of the game you defeat Nina and save Coco. The Dominator falls on Wumpa Island and Cortex and Nina flee the place, with Neo promising he'll be even more evil next time. The Bandicoot celebrate and Crash talks for the first time in the series. Oh, Wumpa Island! But our stuff's okay. Now let's go home and eat pancakes! Pancakes! Did I mention that the game also has co-op? Yeah, uh, grab a friend and pick this game. You will have a lot of fun with this one. The second player also plays as White Crash and it doesn't affect the story at all but that's alright. It's a very fun game and it shouldn't be overlooked. And for the sequel, I remember not liking this game as much when I was younger, specifically because I got stuck in the middle of the game and couldn't get past it for the longest time. Crash Mind Over Mutant takes place right after the last game, with Cortex leaving Nina at evil school. He then joins forces with Embryo, who invents a VR headset that can turn animals into monsters again, because it worked so well last time.
You start again in Crash's house, and you are free to roam around the level. You get a cutscene where Coco is trying to fix the Dominator to use it as a multimedia system, but she needs different parts to fix it. So your first mission is to go around Wumpa Island gathering them for her. The gameplay is basically the same as the last game, but with some small differences. Probably to fit the new style of game that this is. Instead of going through each level like the last game, this one is open world. You can go wherever you want, whenever you want. You are introduced to a new mechanic, which is to spin on top of holes to dig through the ground, but it's just a gimmick used in certain places of the game. After you get back to Coco, you get another cutscene, an ad for the gadget created by Embryo that can do anything you need. Yes. Now I have more time to devote to my hobbies, like falconry and classical cheeses. Thank you, NV, for giving me technological bliss. Call now and you'll also receive neckbeard in a can. Got a problem? Spray some hair on it. Stare into the dancing lights. Stare and dream. Stare and dream. Get your NV today. Soon to be available everywhere but Arkansas. Okay, the humor is still pretty good. You get the gadget through the mail, and while Coco and Crunch are having fun with it, Crash and Aku Aku can use it. They get attacked by Engine and go after him to make him leave the island. But meanwhile, Coco and Crunch get mutated by the headset and now you have to go save them. Uh, by beating them up. You have your first boss fight with Coco, and she finds a video of Cortex Evil Plan uh, by looking at his blog. They betray Uka Uka so they can take what they call Bad Mojo from him for the headset. From now on, you supposedly should be able to play co-op with Coco, but for some reason in the PS2 version, you can only play as White Crash again. Crash, Coco and Aku Aku go after Nina at Evil School, so they can get a lead of where Cortex is. Again, you can go through a lot of different places here, and even better than the last one. The sense of progression is really great, going from location to location makes the world feel alive. Now even with different NPCs scattered around the world for you to talk to. I'm the architect's assistant, by the way, and I'll be acting as translator, as he doesn't care enough about you to form actual words. <laughs> The architect says, during your brief stay, be sure to enjoy things like indoor plumbing that you're probably not used to. You find different titans in this one. It's the same overall amount, but they all play different either way. I didn't mention this before, but in the first game you couldn't jump if you were riding one. Now every titan can jump and Aku Aku can even save one for you for whenever you want. So if you have a part where you wanna play as Crash or a different titan, but you don't wanna lose your special one, you can press R2 and store him. If there's one thing I can say that I didn't like about this game, it's also the open world. While it is pretty awesome to explore levels however you want, it is very easy to get lost. You will be walking back and forth through the same parts over and over again, and the game even jokes about it later on. I will use my power to let you move around quickly. You dummies probably walked everywhere. Yeah, real funny, dumbass. There's an excruciating amount of walking in this game, and it can be very boring if you're not the type that likes exploring. The graphics are still very good, better than the first. The game looks very pretty and colorful, but at the same time, it seems like they overlooked some of the things that look pretty bad, like some 2D textures for the background. I think they hid those things better in the first game, so I'm not sure why that happened. I also checked the Xbox 360 version of this game and it also has the same textures. Weird. The music is still pretty good. I can't say I like it as much as the other game, but that might be nostalgia talking. They also fit the levels pretty well, they just didn't stick with me as much as the first one.
Like I said before, I didn't finish the game as a kid. For some reason I got stuck in this part, but all I had to do was speak to this guy and that was it. I don't know if I was just extremely stupid or it was a bug, but I swear I couldn't move past an invisible wall here. You join forces with your enemies from other games that got betrayed by Cortex and even Uka Uka, which... Uh, well... Oh, 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 that's... That, that's unsettling. And guess what? Little Uka there's looking hungry! You gross, it's dirty! I'll get my revenge for this, Cortex! Yes, yes, revenge. I'm not the one in the milking machine, Milky... Magoo. Cortex out! You find out that Cortex is in his space station. You prepare to confront him, and to make himself stronger, he drinks a potion and now you have to use him to destroy his own station. You defeat Cortex and the ship falls in Wumpa Island again. So basically the same as the last game. However, this one abruptly ends, so I think even they weren't expecting a sequel to this one. Overall, this one has a lot of things that are better than the original, but also a lot of things that push it back from being better than it. The way they tell the story by using various different art styles is pretty awesome. The graphics look better most of the time and the gameplay was expanded to give you more freedom to move around and use more than a titan at the same time. However, like I mentioned, it can be pretty boring to just walk around the same places over and over again. Most of the game you will be doing that and it took me 3 times longer to beat this one than the first. But unlike the first, not because there were so many levels, but because you had to repeat them over and over again. I think it's definitely worth checking these games out if you can't get past the fact that they gave Crash tattoos and Aku Aku isn't square anymore. I would definitely recommend you to get a friend and pick this up. It can definitely kill a whole afternoon and it's definitely fun to play. <sighs> but yeah, I guess that's it for this one. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like, it really helps me a lot. And as always, Thank you so much for our new members, hcs 23 street and Watch Kitty. Becoming a member is the best way you can support the channel for now, so really thank you so much. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Take care!